Hello everybody. Today we are going to discuss on how to read postoperative CT scans after hepatobiliary surgery. My name is Soyeon Kang, a third year surgical resident, and I had a bit of help from Changhwan Park, a friend of mine who is a third year resident in radiology. As you all know, hepatobiliary surgeries can be quite tough, and CT scans are one of the most, if not the best, informative diagnostic tool we can use to follow up the patient for any postoperative complications. A consensus is yet to be made on the right timing of taking the routine follow-up CT scans, or if taking it at all. Our institution, however, routinely takes a follow-up CT scan four to five days after any major hepatobiliary surgery. Of course, patient symptoms and signs must be taken into account, and CT scans may be taken earlier if needed. These are the general steps that are followed to review all the postoperative CT scans. Just a reminder, you don't have to follow these steps. This is just one of the way the postoperative CT can be looked at, and it includes all the basics. The order does not matter. So, we first open the venous face, which gives us the most information. The lung is easy to forget, so it is looked at at the beginning. We don't usually take time to see so much in the lungs, such as small nodules, and we just have to know whether there is some infection, effusion, or atelectasis. The main part to look at after surgery is always the operation site, the anastomosis, the resection site. Both of them must be checked carefully, and the location of the drain should be noted. We can then check the rest of the bowels and other organs for possible edematous or ischemic change. It is also good to note whether there is postoperative ileus. Hepatobiliary surgery involves many vessels, so the vascularity should also be checked for possible thrombosis, aneurysm, or stenosis. Lastly, we can also check whether the wound is healing properly. Now let us first start with pancreas or biliary surgery. There are several kinds of surgery for pancreas and the bile duct. Pancreatic duodenectomy, whether the Whipple operation or the pilus preserving pancreatic duodenectomy, is one of the most technically difficult operations in this area. It has three anastomoses the pancreatic jejunostomy, choledoco jejunostomy, and the gastro jejunostomy or the duoden jejunostomy. Let me use the post operative CT of a patient who underwent pylos preserving pancreatic duodenectomy as an example for post operative CT of a pancreas biliary surgery. The optimal timing of taking the post operative CT scans may vary, but in our department, we take it about five days after the operation. The venous phase is selected. And the the window is changed to the lung preset to check for lung lesions covered in the scan. There seems to be bilateral pleural fusion due to high volume of fluid input. Next, it is then changed back into the abdominal window preset. The anastomosis looks intact, and there are some fluid, scanty fluid collections. So this is around the PJ. There are some fluid collections here, which are irregular and scattered, and it's small in size, so it does not need any additional drainage. Then other anastomoses are taken into attention, and they seem all right. There is mild bowel edema, but there's no sign of proximal dilatation. So you can see that there is probably no postoperative ileus. After the veins are checked, the arteries are also traced. They are checked if there are any pseudoaneurysms, especially in the gastrododenal ar artery, and if there are any obstructions. So this patient is alright, and here I have some examples of some gastrodotary pseudoaneurysms as you can as it can be seen here and this is the pseudoaneurysm and there is hematoma nearby it's, su it's suggesting rupture of the aneurysm for liver resection major hepatectomy is often defined as a resection of three or more segments 
Minor hepatectomy is the resection of two or less, or sometimes tumorectomy. When there is no anastomosis, such as hepaticojejunostomy, the main thing to check in the postoperative CT is the state of the liver parenchyme and the major vasculature. Here is an example of a patient who underwent right hemiapatectomy with CT taken on the fourth postoperative day. On this right side, a pleural effusion, which is most probably reactive. Here you can see, as we reach the operation site, there is fluid collection with air bubbles, about 5 cm in length, and the shape is quite round. Sometimes co post complicated fluid collections such as these have a capsule that is enhanced. There is some um, low attenuation in the liver parenchyme. Well, we have to differentiate whether it's a tumor or some kind of focal inf infarction, and it seems like the latter. The left portal vein is checked, and there is a focal stenosis in this area, but the overall flow is good, extending to the all distal areas of the parenchyme. Hepatic vein seems patent. So sometimes fluid collections, they can be checked whether it's hematoma or not. Most often, if the Hounsfield unit is less than 20, it is fluid, the reactive water. So reactive fluid is more likely than hematoma. It can also be checked in the non-contrast phase. Since the fluid here evenly shows a lower attenuation compared to the liver, hematoma is less likely. Liver transplantation is one of the biggest hepatobiliary surgery. For living donor transplantation, in our department, we perform right liver resection. In both cases, all the major vasculatures must be checked for patency and the liver parenchyme must be given attention. This patient had living donor liver transplantation. She took the CT scan after two days because her liver function tests kept escalating. So let's see the video. As you can he see here, the liver parenchyme in the anterior section shows lower attenuation, suggesting perhaps ischemic change. There is some severe periportal edema. Now let's take a look at the vasculature. The portal flow seems okay here. The portal flow seems intact. But compared to these bright portal flows, the PTFE graft shows ill attenuation. Going up to the hepatic, art, hepatic vein, the right hepatic vein shows some patency, but there's some stenosis. Now we go to the arterial phase. We can see the right posterior hepatic artery. The flow is intact. And let's check for the anterior. The anterior one also seems intact. So we can presume that the problem is the hep hepatic vein. Yes. So the patient had a stent insertion in the hepatic vein insertion to the IVC and the liver recovered nicely. This time it's a post-operative CT scan of a patient who had received deceased donor liver transplant. So the overall liver parenchyme is checked. There are some mild periportal edema. There is some focal infarct in the S7 and S4 areas, but it doesn't seem to be too much. The right and left portals are checked. Their flow seems okay. No specific, no thrombus. It's patent. There is some narrowing at the hepatic vein to the IVC insertion site. But the overall flow seems okay. Now let's check for the arteries. So both the, hepat the intrahepatic arteries, they must be checked. It is difficult to trace the intrahepatic arteries to the end of the parenchyme. So if it can be seen at the proximal area, it's probably uh, that the, the flow is considered intact. Bleeding is also a major complication after hepatobiliary surgery. It requires the highest and utmost attention. As mentioned before, Having a hematoma usually has a Hounsfield unit of higher than 20. It is most often around 40. 
Also, it should be checked in the non-contrast phase because it has higher attenuation than just simple fluid or even complicated fluids. It can be also compared with the liver. To check for active arterial bleeding, the arterial phase is first compared to the non-contrast phase to avoid confusion caused by some surgical material and clips. Once the focus is found, it is then compared to the venous phase. Also, it's important to note that venous bleeding is not easily found through the CT scan. Oh, here it is. So this patient underwent living donor liver transplantation. After one week, she underwent CT scans because she showed signs of active bleeding. There is some fluid collection here on the right posterior side of the liver. It is checked in the non-contrast phase and it shows some irregular irregular and mixed attenuation in the non-contrast phase. It is then checked carefully in the active in the arterial phase to see if there are any is any point of extravasation. Since the focus is the hematoma is here, we have to check nearby the hematoma. And here it seems is the focus of extravasation. That same focus is also checked, matched and checked in the non-contrast phase to show to for us to remove any confusion that can be caused by the surgical materials. And once the point is found, it is gen checked with the venous phase. If it is real active bleeding, the point of extravasation in the arterial phase will show further extravasation into this fluid collection, which is we presume hematoma. Sometimes in case of pseudoaneurysms or transient bleeding, there will be no further uh, extravasation found in the venous phase. So finally, here are some other points to note when reading post-operative CT scans after hepatobiliary surgery. As mentioned before, complicated fluid collection is often round, capsulated, with air bubbles and amount that require some drainage. Anastomosis leakage is easy to diagnose if the two anastomoses is literally placed apart, but otherwise, it can only be deduced by other clues such as surrounding fluid collection and patient symptoms. Periporter edema is often seen after liver surgery, and it gradually fades. So it's important to see the difference between the periportal edema and the interhepatic duct dilatation. So the difference between the two is that the periportal edema is symmetric. As you can see here, there is lower attenuation in both sides of the portal vein. For IHD dilatation, on the other hand, it shows lower attenuation in one side of the vein. So thank you all for listening. I have given a quick narration on some of the points to look and watch out for when reading post-operative CT scans. It is important to note that while the images can give you critical information, patient symptoms should always be kept in mind to make the correct reading. Thank you and have a wonderful day.